Good day. I am uh, most unhappy that I cannot be with you in beautiful Prague. I am here in New York, but I want to speak to you about the dignity of man and the importance of the human rights of older persons. So I will read to you. First, Doris Lessing has said, there aren't that many people that actually worry or think about human rights, freedom, truth, the impoverished lives of people, the dreaded diseases, unquote. There is so much for people to deal with that they set these matters aside. Yet that is what humanity must deal with ultimately. And I have written elsewhere, one must avoid a sense of entitlement. Can one, one can enjoy one's advantages, but one should be careful about feeling entitled. Can one truly say one's life is no better, no more valuable than that of another? The true test of valid fellow feeling and a democracy over against elitism is the most difficult human right of all. That is true equality, the superior attitude. The superior attitude is what so-called ordinary people hate. Is anyone truly ordinary? I now want to turn to an important document, the Declaration of Human Rights of Older Persons, which we at the International Longevity Center, USA, and our other centers around the world have built in relationship to the Yale University School of Law's Human Rights Clinic, a famous clinic that has dealt with human rights issues for years. I will read from it because it's very important to know what we hope will be achieved. That is the introduction of this within the United Nations and its movement to eventually become replaced or added to by not just a Declaration of Human Rights, but a Convention of Human Rights, which provides provide footing, legal footing, for the rights of older persons. As you know, many of the most abused people in the world are older women. We must put a stop to that. So I read now from this document, which solemnly proclaims the following United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Older Persons as a standard of achievement to be pursued in the spirit of partnership and mutual respect. Article 1, older persons are free and equal to all other persons and have the right to be free from discrimination on the basis of age, <coughs> gender, racial or ethnic background, nationality, disability, financial situation, or any other status. Article 2, older people have the right to be free from physical, sexual, emotional, and financial abuse. Two, states shall take effective measures to protect older persons from all forms of exploitation, abuse, and marginalization. Article three, older persons have the right to enfranchisement and participation in their state's political system, including the rights to participate in the development of policy that affects their well-being. Article four, older persons have the right to adequate food, water, shelter, clothing, and health care. Two, states shall take measures to ensure the provision of an adequate income, family and community support, and opportunities for older persons to exercise financial independence and care for themselves in the same capacity as other adults. Article 5, older persons have the right to equal treatment before the laws and equal access to institutions and processes of judgment. Article 6, item 1. Older persons have the right to social, legal, and medical services that respect and enhance their autonomy. Two, older persons have the right to autonomy and decisions about their use of social, legal, and medical services, including decisions about end-of-life care. Article 7. One, states shall create mechanisms that guarantee respect for the dignity, beliefs, needs, and privacy of older persons in health care and other institutions. Two, states shall take measures to establish relief and support programs that enable families to provide care for older persons, as with the aim of allowing older persons to live under the care of family members rather than in institutions. Article 8, item 1, older persons have the right to the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health care including preventive and rehabilitative treatment. Two, older persons have the right to be free from discrimination on the basis of age, 
in their access to all medical institutions, health services, and medical care. Item three, older persons with terminal illnesses or permanent disabilities have the right to adequate continuing medical care, including adequate pain relief provided by the state. Article four, older persons have the right to comprehensive medical care in accordance with the national law of their respective countries. Five, states shall ensure that health care facilities are physically and financially accessible to all older persons. Article 9, older persons have the right to work and have access to other income gathering opportunities. Item 2, older persons have the right to be free from discrimination in hiring, promotion, and discharge. Item 3, older persons have the right to participate in determining when and at what pace they would draw from the labor force. Our item four, older persons have the right to exercise trade union rights to the same extent as younger workers, both while working and after retiring from the labor force. Article 10, older persons have the right to benefit from Social Security, including social insurance, in accordance with the national laws of their respective states. Item two, States shall guarantee the provision of survivors and orphans benefits and the heirs to the heirs of any person covered by Social Security or who is receiving a pension. Article 11. Older persons have the rights to receive a non-contributory state-funded pension. Article 12. Older persons have the right to equal access to educational, cultural, spiritual, and recreational resources. Item 2. Older persons have the right to education, including literacy training. Article 3. Older persons have an equal right to participate in public affairs to whatever extent they are interested and capable. Article 14. Older persons have the right to form movements or associations of other older persons. Article 15. Older persons have the right to live in environments that are safe and adaptable to personal preferences and changing capacities. Article 16, older persons shall have the right to enjoy the benefits of scientific progress and research on medical, biological, physiological, and social aspects of aging. Article 17, older persons have the right during and after natural or other disasters to receive timely and effective assistance from relief workers who have been trained to assist older persons. Article 18, States shall adopt all reasonable measures to ensure that older persons are free from negative stereotypes in general and specifically in media portrayals. Article 19. Older persons have a right to be free from the traditional practices that on the basis of age infringe upon their fundamental human rights. So you have heard now the Declaration of Human Rights of Older Persons. The task and responsibility before us is to see that this becomes incorporated within the United Nations structure. We do not want ownership of this perspective, of this Declaration of Independence, nor do we expect it to remain exactly as I read it to you today. We want and welcome revisions, ideas, other opportunities from any nation to address the issues. Our main goal and purpose is to see that at some point, at some avenue of resolution, we have in place an appropriate declaration of human rights of older persons, no less than what I read to you, perhaps more than what I read to you. And this declaration must then be followed up by a convention, Convention of Human Rights of Older Persons, which will bring to it the prospects of some legal basis, some strength by which we can effectively operate. Now we must acknowledge that resource constraints may limit the ability of states to immediately realize the rights of older persons, but we encourage states to comply with and effectively implement all their obligations under international law as they apply to older persons in consultation and cooperation with the persons concerned. We emphasize the potential for international cooperation to help achieve equal respect for older persons of all nations. And we emphasize further the need for states to incorporate these rights and mechanisms for their protection into domestic law 
and undertake steps to achieve the full realization of these rights recognized in the present declaration. We urge states to intensify efforts to promote universal respect for the rights of older persons. We hope, too, states will convene conferences for the purpose of drafting a convention, a convention on the rights of older persons. A number of years ago, in 1967-68, I began to use the term ageism in America. By ageism, I meant age discrimination. And I adopted it as analogous to other terms that related to prejudice in America. Racism, the indignified, awful experience experienced by racial minorities, and sexism, the often discriminating experience that women face. So it seemed valuable to me to introduce a new term, which is now widely used and incorporated within the Oxford Dictionary of the English Language. And so I see age discrimination or ageism as very central to the lives of older people. We must abandon such prejudice and move on. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you, and I hope that this conference has great success. But very much, I hope to hear from you directly and to have your support as we move forward with this initiative. Thank you again. <laughs>